Council Member Larson. Hey there. Hello. We're currently just getting the live stream set up, uh, so it should start now. And then Chair Eskridge, you are good to go. Okay, the meeting of the Arts Commission is called to order at 7.03 p.m. Before we get started, I'd like to remind commissioners of some procedural items for this meeting. During the meeting, commissioners and participants should remain muted when not speaking. If commissioners or participants have a question or comment, please use the raise hand feature. Speakers will be called upon to speak one at a time. A random order voice vote will be administered by city staff for the vote. The Arts Commission meeting is being conducted utilizing teleconferencing and electronic means as, fo as allowed by Government Code Subdivision 54953E and Resolution 108921, reaffirmed January 25th, 2022. Members of the public may provide audio comment by connecting to the teleconferencing meeting online or by telephone. Use the raise hand feature to request to speak or star nine on the telephone. Teleconference meeting details are available on the Arts Commission meeting agenda. Comments on matters not on the agenda must be submitted prior to the time the chair calls the item for oral communications. Comments on agenda items must be submitted prior to the time the chair closes the public hearing on agenda item. Speakers are requested to keep their comments to a maximum of three minutes and the time limits will be enforced. Guidelines are posted on the Arts Commission meeting agenda. Automatically generated captions are available to viewers accessing this meeting via Zoom. Captions can be displayed or hidden using the live transcript button. Roll call. City staff, may we please have the roll call? Chair Eskridge? Present. Vice Chair Veith. Present. Commissioner Vaughn is currently absent. Commissioner Cerrone. It looks like yours could be muted. Here. Thank you. And Commissioner Lamb. Present. Perfect. Uh, currently uh, we have four present uh, with one absent. And then also uh, Council Member Larson. Okay, presentation. Next on the agenda is presentations. Ask for any questions of public at the end of each presentation. Uh, 220271, Hands on the Arts Festival Scope. Um, Kristen Dance is going to be uh, doing the presentation. And uh, ask for any questions or comments at the end of the presentation. I'm actually gonna give Kristen a little tee up first. Uh, and just want to say good evening, first of all. Thank you for coming this evening. Uh, so Hands on the Arts this year is also going to have, um, well, it'll be back in person, which I think we've shared with you. We're going to be 100% outdoors. But the biggest um, addition, which we're all excited for, is that we're going to team up with another special event that the city had also wanted to get going. Um, and it just made natural sense to combine the two. So they wanted to put together some sort of cultural event and so we're gonna be doing that this year. I mean, Hands on the Arts has always had some sort of multicultural um, exposure and experience to it. So this year we're gonna expand on that and also um, broaden our reach to try to include more people, not just a family kid style event. So this year with the event's actually gonna be called the Sunnyvale Cultural Celebration featuring Hands on the Arts. So it'll be kind of a co-headlined event. So go ahead and save the date. If you don't have it done already, it'll be Saturday, May 14th. Uh, the event's going to be one hour shorter than, than normal. Uh, we'll be starting at 10 a.m. as we usually do and ending at 3 p.m. So it'll be a five-hour event. Uh, in terms of what to expect um, and the way that the, the Arts Commission get involved, Kristen's going to get to that in just a moment. Um, but you can kind of think of it as two events that where Hands on the Arts will kind of be typically as you've expected. There'll be 20 artist booths that will be all scattered around. The Arts Commission could be one of those. Uh, so we'll get into that shortly, or, or there could be a different way to get involved. Um, and then uh, separate from that, there'll be some other cultural experiences, which we're working on putting together. A lot of that was most likely going to um, be featured around the performing arts uh, section or other ways that cultures can be celebration. There'll be some booths, um, just like community organizations can also attend and booth. 
or host an interactive area. So all of these things staff are working on now to put together, um, but it'll be basically an expansion kind of, of hands on the arts is the best way to kind of look at it in the simplest terms. But we're really excited to kind of get these two things going together uh, and really focus not only on cultural celebrations, but also make sure hands on the arts comes back um, in a fun and an exciting way. So we're really excited. Um, and as also always, we'd love to have the participation of the Arts Commission. And so here's Kristen to discuss that a little bit further. Yeah, thanks, Trenton. So as Trenton mentioned, we are hoping that the Arts Commission wants to oversee a booth again this year and um, share your artistic talents and um, interests to the community. Um, as he also mentioned, the uh, festival is going to be uh, five hours this year. So we're going to ask everybody if they could please uh, work a three hour shift or so. Um, and we'll kind of split it up a little bit so that you're not there the whole day, but there long enough. And so one of the things I wanted to talk a little bit about tonight as we're preparing and trying to get ready to go, the applications for um, artists to apply to host a project are out right now. And the deadline for that is February 28th. So we are moving right along. So I wanted to kind of um, plant a little seed and talk a little bit about what, what you as a commission might be interested in hosting, the type of a project, if you're interested in hosting. And then from there, whatever feedback we get tonight, we'll take back. I'll look into how we could structure that as a project and um, what kind of supplies would be needed and how we think we could make that work within our festival and the, the way that we do things. Um, and then come back to you in March is the next meeting and come back to you with some specific ideas so that we can really say by the end of the meeting next month, we can say, this is the project we're working on. And as I've done in the past three years or we've done for the past three years, I'm happy to help structure the project, figure out what kind of supplies are gonna be needed, do all the math, uh, kind of get it all prepped for you so that you can come in um, you might have a little bit of prep before, depending upon what the project is, but basically come in the day of and um, work with the kids. And that also gives you a chance to promote the Arts Commission to the community. And as Trenton said, we're going to have the other um, part of the community this year, which is the cultural event. And so it's not necessarily geared towards kids. So we will have a whole new um, group of people that are attending the festival. Um, so it's a great time for you to talk up the Arts Commission and how much fun it is to be on the commission and kind of what some of the commission's priorities are. So having said all that, I wanted to open it up to the four commissioners who are here uh, and see if you had a preference. And if you don't, that's OK, too. Um, I'm not expecting you to be 100 percent prepared tonight to say <laughs> I want to do Hope Flags, um, which is the project we did two, year, two years ago, three years ago now. Uh, but anyway, um, but if you had something in particular that you think would be a fun project that you'd like to put before your um, fellow commissioners, I'd love to hear it tonight. And then I will run with it for a month and see kind of what we can come up with. And so Ricky, do you wanna? Oh, really quick. Did we mention the event's gonna be free? Oh, the event's gonna be free. So that's also new. So in addition to that, we'll be, we're hoping to bring in a, a wider audience. Yeah, so we could have some big crowds and we will be, we're, talk, we're, we're having some discussions about, you know, how we're gonna manage all of that. But, um, but we're, we're super excited about the new format and how it's all gonna kind of work together. That must be sugar sprinkles. <laughs> All right. So does anybody have any ideas? Winnie, Winnie's got yes. her hand up. Yes. Thank you, Kristen. I'm so excited. And, and Trenton, I'm so excited to hear that the event's going to be free because I think that would widen the appeal and the audience. So that's awesome. Um, I do have an idea, but before I share it, um, Kristen, I have seen that uh, maybe you organized uh, in previous years whether it is from Hands on the Arts or from State of the City, you know those huge paintings that are outside the community center? Huh? Like, 
could we do something like that? Because I, I have an idea for doing like a community painting um, that would be really easy for everybody to participate in. A community mural? Yes, we've done community murals in the past. In fact, I'm notorious and have quite the reputation for salvaging all of those and hanging them all over the community center, <laughs> regardless of what everybody else thinks, because I, I just love the kids' artwork. So um, that's definitely a possibility. Whether or not we would be able to be doing that exact same huge format, I, that remains to be seen, but it's certainly something we could think about. We also um, could use... Um, just off the top of my head, uh, pieces of canvas, loose canvas that we treat ahead of time. But yeah, if you wanted to look at doing a mural, did yeah. you have something in specifically? I, I do, I do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the concept is, okay, so, you know, whether the form factor is as big as the ones that we have done before or some other size, you know, I think that's uh, to be determined. Um, the concept is, uh, we can make it into like a cutout. You know how like, you go to uh, an amusement park and you have those like photo op things where you like you put your head in and like, you know, you smile for the picture type thing. So I was thinking of doing something like that. We can paint uh, like a, a giant sun because, well, we're in Sunnyvale. Ha ha ha. Um, and it can be like a stained glass type design, um, like stained glass as in like the, I don't know if you've seen chalk art and the stained glass type design thing I can send mm -hmm. some pictures okay um, basically it's really easy to do like even kids can do it and everyone can pick a different color as like a, a sun ray type thing um, it's a lot easier to illustrate than to describe using words um, but anyway like I'm happy to share a, a like a picture or a mock or something afterwards okay Okay, so are you, just so I understand, are you suggesting the possibility of making the actual, uh, painting the, the cutouts or actually doing the photo ops there? The day uh, of? Good question. So I'm thinking like we can have the, the piece of, you know, wood structure, let's say if it's made out of wood and we have the whole cutout already. And then we invite the public during the event to participate in the painting of that thing. And okay. then at the end of the, of the event, then we end up with this piece that folks can then use as like a, a selfie station type thing. Okay. So you'd be interested in putting it up for display following the festival, because I'm assuming it yeah. might be a little wet for people to stick their faces in <laughs> yes. the day, the day <laughs> of, but... That'll be face painting. That's a different art activity. <laughs> <laughs> just, just here though. <laughs> um, okay, great. That's something I can run with and come up with a couple of ideas on how we could approach that. Um, Sue, um, you have anything you've been thinking about? I know you. I know you've been thinking about this for the last couple of weeks. I have. Oh. <laughs> um. Am I, am I unmuted? Yes, but okay. again, if you don't have an idea tonight, that's fine. I can leave it open and you can email me tomorrow or the next day with ideas also. Um, okay. I just, I just am looking for a direction that the commission might want to go as, you know, as a group. Well, um, unfortunately for you, I do have some ideas. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, I can't say I've been thinking thinking about them for weeks. Uh, I have had one idea for a really long time, but I'm not okay. sure. Yeah, and, and it's a maple. Uh, maple, you know, uh -huh. you know what I'm talking about there, right? The ma a maple. Um, yeah. What you does like anybody, a maple tree? Okay. Does anybody know? Oh, what the may maple. Maple, not maple. Yeah. And, <laughs> Okay, because I mean, not everybody's ever heard of it, but we grew up in a, in an era where um, school kids, in particular, but all all ages except for little tiny ones, uh, he, uh, did this, and it's traditionally done. It is a cultural celebration, but it doesn't have to be uh, on May the first. Um, and <laughs> girls would wear um, wreaths made out uh -huh. of flowers um and the guys probably had a lapel thing um or something they could wear on their bodies but of course it can be 
any way you want it, just so there's flowers involved. Um, okay. But so you have a pole. It, I would think it'd be cool to have a tall pole, like a light pole or a, one of those things um, that I haven't looked at the, the whole area. So I, I can't really suggest which pole would be the best, but, you know, a, a tall pole. And then on the top of the pole, you affix streamers that go all the way down to the ground with a little extra room. Uh, they can be, crepe is pretty tenuous, but, you know, rib, ribbon or um, yeah, yeah. Okay. some sort of fabric. And then you decide how many people you want to have involved in it, depending on the, the radius that you have and um, how long the ribbons are, the, the, the tethers are. And then, and then you um, have, you divide whoever wants to participate into two groups, group number one and group number two, or you have a group A and group B. And then they face each other, one and two, and they just go over and, and under, and over and under, and over and under, and they continue doing that uh, forever. <laughs> until the um, the ribbon runs out, and okay. it makes a really pretty design of what would design on the maypole. It's usually done with music, you know, something to keep the beat, so you can da, 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 so you can over and under and over and under. It helps you focus because if you screw up, it's okay, but. Uh, it makes it harder for everybody to keep on. Uh, is, that on called, is that called Beltane? Is that the Beltane Spring Rite Festival? It could be, sure. I think the Beltane, Spring Rite. Mm -hmm. I think that's it what it could be. Thinking. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. It's cultural. Okay. So uh, that's one idea. Okay. Um, so, so you would need um, somebody to basically put it, put the, pick out the pole, put the tethers on, ribbons, whatever. And you need somebody to uh, keep people out of the way, pick out a group of A and pick out a group of B and okay. tell them how to do it. Yeah, that's so, so maybe So maybe the project could be making the wreath uh, and then the maypole would be there and the kids could interact with it. Mm -hmm. Something yeah. like that. Okay, yeah. Yeah. all right. Uh, let's see, Agnes. I have a question and sure. I have maybe a thought on, yeah. on an activity. So the question is, do you need people to help vet the artist applications for, because I'll volunteer to do that for the um, Hands on the Arts? Uh, Jen, you can chime in, but at this point we normally have, we do do a during process. Uh, and so the applications are usually juried by the, uh, the project staff, but mm -hmm. that could be something possibly that the commission could sit in on. Yeah. Okay. So let me know if you need, if you okay. want a commissioner to sit on that. And a thought I had for possibly a project would be, we talk a lot about art and art made from recycled objects. And I think it might be really cool to, cause you could consider this a sustainability art type project. If we maybe had, if we could create artwork with um, used objects, like maybe the kids bring in a couple of pieces of, I don't know, things from their house, or maybe we have things that people donate and create something from that, create sculptures from it or whatever. I know that's not very specific, but it's no, problem. it's 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 not. But that's okay. That's what I'm here for. Good. But but knowing that you're interested in using recycled materials, that could be a single project on its own, or perhaps it could be combined with one of the other ideas we've talked about, where whatever we're creating, we're using recycled materials to do that. Which is actually <laughs> funny enough. That is what. Well, not funny enough, but that is one of the uh, the mainstays of our festival. Is we. We have a whole supply room downstairs at the community center that has a ton of stuff in it. And we recycle a lot of things. We also last year developed a really good relationship with Fabmo. 
out of Sunnyvale. So um, we worked with them to use a lot of their uh, recycled materials that they had in the warehouse. So, so if, if the Sustainability Commission comes and has a booth, we could work with them on this. That could be a joint project. It could be. Um, I'm going to make a guess, but we are going to have a lot of uh, neighborhood community workshops as part of the combining from the other festival. So, um, and I, we are going to be asking other city departments to have a booth and talk about what it is they do. And I wouldn't be surprised if sustainability um, and ESD said, we want to be there and make a presence. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Thanks. But I'll make a note of that and keep it in mind as I go along. All right. So Donna, I think you're. Oh. Yeah. You so um, um, the only thing I was thinking last year when we um, had the presentation for the Washington Park Aquatic Aquatic Center. I was kind of mulling around in my head the idea of like kids or community contributing painted rocks with uh, pictures of aquatic themes that could have probably could have been added to their artwork. But it was just so I was like making finding rocks and painting them. So I was thinking maybe rock art might be kind of a cool thing. Um, okay. with, and. Um, and then to tie in what um, she said about recycled materials, um, I mean, and also with the face painting, it could be a big panel with the cutout face where part of it is, if not only painting, could be like recycled materials. People could like glue or stick buttons or aluminum foil or whatever on the canvas as well to kind of combine those two thoughts. That's, that's it. All right. Well, that gives me a few things to run with. And then Kristen, it does look like uh, Sue has her hand uh, raised again. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Sue. Uh, I just wanted to um, say um, about FABMO that I know the owners really well, maybe you do too, um, but they, and they have um, a lot of projects. They have a lot of ideas and mm -hmm. prepackaged, yeah, things that they can offer. Uh, so um, they uh, that's a rich opportunity, just just seconding that idea. Uh, and I love, I love painted rocks. I love them. I love to do them. Uh, they're so much fun. So I think, I think they're all great ideas. So have fun with all that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And, and I will just close by saying that uh, we, we did, um, partner with FABMO to do a project. Uh, was it last year when we were handing out the projects? I think they did, uh, they did a couple of different projects with us. So they were, they were great to work with and um, they were very enthusiastic. And so I'm hoping they're gonna be back this year. Okay, great. Then I will get to work with that and we will have something for you uh, to discuss and vote on at the next commission meeting. Can I promise that Ricky? Can, we, can you put us on the agenda? Yes. <laughs> All right, great, thank you. Okay, um, next our oral communication. Oh, as a reminder to the public, please raise your digital hand or star, star nine on the telephone if you wish to address the commission on a topic that is not on tonight's agenda. City staff will ask you to unmute your microphone when it's your turn to address the commission. City staff, do we have any members of the public wishing to speak under oral communications? None at this time. Okay. And then next is the consent calendar. Since we remain in a virtual setting, I will ask my colleagues to use the virtual raise hand feature to indicate they wish to speak. City staff, do we have any members of the public wishing to speak on a consent calendar item? None at this time. Okay, I will now ask for a motion for my colleagues. Uh, the motion should be to approve the consent calendar. Do I have a motion? I, I move that we approve the consent calendar. 
Okay. A second. A second. Okay. City staff, please conduct a random order voice vote. Commissioner Lamb. I support it. Commissioner Cerrone. Yes. Vice Chair uh, Vice. Yes. Chair Eskridge. Yes. The motion passes four to zero with one absent. Okay. Next is public hearings and general business. Item 220212. Review and recommend design proposals for the great box cover-up utility box painting project phase one. Once again, since we remain in a virtual setting, I will ask my colleagues to use the virtual raise hand feature to indicate they wish to speak. And um, um, commission, yeah, do we have any questions or feedback from, com so um, I guess there's a presentation for the. Yes, there's a staff presentation. Okay. Um, so city staff, um, do you want to uh, do the presentation or should I read this whole thing? Do we have any questions or feedback from commissioners or board members about the project? First we'll do the presentation and then we'll follow up with questions. Okay. So before we start the actual presentation, um, I just wanna take a couple of minutes to kind of remind everybody of how we got to where we got to because we've been talking quite a bit about the utility box project for um, gosh, a few years now um, because it originally uh, came as part of uh, our community outreach that we did during our master planning for public art. And um, utility boxes was something that definitely kept coming up. It was an in interest of the commission, of the city council, and of the community. Um, so in November of 2020, the council actually approved $50,000 from the public art fund to implement a utility box project. Um, we, the, uh, the project uh, was, was kind of a, an attempt for us to bring local artists into the community while at the same time beautifying some kind of drab, boring, gray signal boxes that are owned by the city. So not every utility box in the city is part of this project, only those that are city owned and that are signal boxes. So we're gonna roll this project out in multiple phases. And the first phase is the downtown phase where we are, have identified 12 boxes downtown that will be um, that we are going to be painting as part of this project. The future phase will include the remaining 20, 26 utility boxes throughout the city, nine of which we are reserving for local high schools. So we have re reserved three uh, utility boxes closest to each of the high schools for that phase of the project, which we have not started yet. We're still in the planning stages. So I don't have a lot of information to give you on that tonight, um, but we are working, uh, working towards that. So each location has one to three boxes on site and the selected artists are require, required to paint the largest of the boxes, but they also have the option to include the other one to two boxes on site. But as I said, not all of them have more than one box. Um, so following council approval of the budget, we issued a request for qualifications uh, and we invited artists who live in Santa Clara, San Mateo, Santa Cruz and Alameda County. So we took the, the neighboring counties to Santa Clara um, and asked artists in those counties living and residing in those counties to apply. We then uh, put together, uh, we asked 10 members of the uh, community to sit on a panel to review and help select the artists. Of the 12 that we talked with, five were able to, to uh, commit to that. And um, that included two project staff, someone who lives downtown, uh, a Sunnyvale artist, and a former arts commissioner. So the committee members were then asked to select their choices of the 12. Um, that they thought would be uh, best suited for this project. And, and that was based um, on artistic style as well as past projects and the ability to do a large, larger scale painting the size of a utility box. So not necessarily a, an eight foot by eight foot mural, but the size of a utility box. Through a voting process, the panel selected 12 artists for the project. 
and the city compensated each of those artists 50% of the total commission or $500 um, to develop a more detailed conceptual design that we're gonna be reviewing this evening. The commission, uh, well, I just said that is asked to review the design concepts. And um, once we do that, you will form a recommendation to the city council. And I'll talk about a little bit more about that as we go along, but um, city council will be reviewing these and uh, hopefully providing a final approval on March 1st. So um, once city council has approved the 12 uh, designs or whatever their approval comes out, um, then the, the staff will be working with each of the artists to flesh out their designs a little bit more before they start painting. We will be giving them um, the types of paints they can use. So they'll have to use approved uh, paints and um, uh, final clear coats as well as base primer coats so that we're protecting the boxes, but at the same time, we're, we're creating some artwork that will last in the elements. Um, these are considered temporary projects, so they will not be part of the permanent collection per se, uh, but they are really meant to stay within the community for a long period of time, as long as we can keep them looking good and um, keep the boxes protected. So with that, we'll go ahead and start the presentation, Ricky. And we'll go through each of the proposals that have been submitted. So our first artist is from Sunnyvale, Sky Vecker Yamakawa. Next slide, please. So Miss um, Becker Yamaka Yamakawa has designed a bold pop surrealist design of colorful flowers on a sky blue background. Next slide. Interspersed on the faces of the boxes are large bee, parrot, and butterflies. Next slide. The design represents the city's native ecosystem while also honoring the Sunnyvale parrots. The artist intends to apply her design to all three boxes located at her assigned site. Next slide. And there's our parrot. And next slide, please. So these are the smaller boxes that are on the site. The first four slides you saw were each side of the larger box, I believe. Although I might be a little off on that, that could be the back sides of these ones. Okay, next slide. All right, so our second artist is from Mountain View. Uh, she lives in Mountain View, works in Palo Alto. Her, her um, studio is in Palo Alto and it's Dottie Sishan. Um, she's created a design Next slide. That pays homage to the city's fruit orchards and agricultural heritage through stylized pink and white tree blossoms representing cherry, plum, apricot, and peach trees. The blossoms will be on two-toned branches on a background of sky blue representing the, the, the affable climate of Sunnyvale. The finished design will be more opaque than what you're seeing here. Um, it'll be bolder and brighter. Uh, she did her design in watercolor and we won't be using watercolor on the boxes. Um, and she intends to expand her design to all three boxes located on her assigned site. And if you go to the next slide, this is a detail of the blossoms that will be spread out amongst all of the boxes. All right, our third artist, next slide is Lila Jamelos from San Jose. Ms. Jamelos is proposing a design that represents the city's industrial and agricultural history. The design includes a steam train passing Murphy Station, continuing through orchards while carrying fruit. The artist intends to expand her design also to all three of the boxes located on her assigned site. So she will take this particular design and continue it on to the rest of the boxes. But this will be kind of the focal point of the design. Uh, next slide. Proposal number four is by Caitlin Gilbert, who is out of Santa Cruz. And she's designed an artistic in interpretation of the historical meaning of Sunnyvale or Sunny Valley. Imagery for her design will be of the foothills native to the area. 
The shading and contrasting of colors will illuminate the natural lighting throughout the day. The panels facing the street are illustrating sunset and dusk, and the panels facing the train tracks will be illustrating early morning or dawn. Side panels will represent the lighting transitions that are in between sunup and sundown. The design will connect from one box to the other so that each view is continuous. And she intends to paint both of the boxes at her assigned site. Next slide. Next is the artistic team of Winnie Lamb and Anaga, Ana, Anaga Mishra. Sorry, I'm not sure I got the first name very well, but they are both from Sunnyvale. Um, you all know Miss Lamb. She will not be voting uh, on this project because she is one of the artists that was selected. But she and the other artists have developed several colorfully illustrated designs that represent Sunnyvale's sunny climate, emphasize diversity and inclusion, and the LGBT community and pay homage to the city's advancement in technology. So they're going to actually be doing four boxes on site. So there were three signal boxes and there was also on that particular site, there was a fourth uh, city owned um, uh, irrigation box. So they will be utilizing that one also. And they intend, um, the, well, the imagery for box one will include robots wearing rain boots and holding umbrellas and using emojis to forecast the weather. Next slide. This is another view. Uh, next slide. The next box they are proposing to transform into a large gray robot. And so the slide on your left, the picture on your left is what it looks like now. Uh, the picture on your right is what it would look like after they've turned it into a robot. Um, let's see, I lost my place here. Okay, so next slide. The remaining two boxes include robots that are falling in love with romantic imagery, such as flowers, candles, heart-filled eyes, and smitten grins. The background of the boxes will remain a solid color. Okay. Next slide. Our next proposal is by Deepti Nanawati, who uh, is the owner of Art Circle Studio here in Sunnyvale. And she is proposing to recreate and expand on some of her existing paintings. Um, so the back panels of both boxes on the site will be painted in an impressionist style depicting poppy fields, native California blooms and hummingbird, hummingbirds with the imagery transitioning into blue green colors of the sky. The finished painting will cover the panels and blend to seamlessly connect all sides of the boxes. And there are two boxes on that particular side. So what you're seeing is the front and the back. Um, okay, next slide. Our next artist is Christine Oliver, who is also a Sunnyvale resident. And she's chosen to paint her boxes with California poppies and delphiniums, delphiniums on a sky blue background. The top of the box will also be painted um, with uh, clouds drifting through the sky. And the final painting will also, again, this is watercolor that she did her um, proposal in, but so the box itself will be a little bit more opaque and the, co the colors will be a little bit more uh, bold. And she also is proposing to paint, um, oh, I'm sorry, she is proposing to paint only the largest of the boxes on the site. Although she, as all the artists would have, um, if they choose to, once they start painting, they could go ahead and paint the other boxes on site. Next proposal is by a Mountain View resident, Harumo Sato. And she's created a design, next slide, inspired by Sunnydale's agricultural history, utilizing stylized fruits, including apricots, prunes, strawberries, peaches, and cherries. And she'll employ a playful oil pastel line work with gold accents and with gold accents um, to make it pop a little bit. And she's going to be painting the largest of the boxes on the site. So the gold accents will catch the changing light and temperature at the site. 
um, changing the look and the feel of the box throughout the course of the day. So the technique is also a nod to the dynamic development that has occurred here in Sunnyvale, the heart of Silicon Valley. Next slide, please. Proposal number nine is by Susan Cypress out of Saratoga. And she was inspired by the location, which is directly in front of the new Civic Center site. Um, so she is proposing to incorporate elements from the Civic Center master landscape plan and some of the um, types of uh, plants and uh, greenery that's called for in that landscape design. It includes a graphic representation of the redwood trunks of the existing redwood trees, California poppies and blue-eyed grass that is native to the area and included in the plan. She's also going to be adding in butterflies, flowers, and an insinuated gentle breeze. She wanted to create a clean, inviting scene that doesn't compete or overpower the natural beauty of the existing trees and pathways and planned open space of the site. There's only one box at this particular site, um, but again, it's right in front of the, the new city hall. Okay, proposal, the next proposal. Oh, this is another view. Okay, so the next proposal is Nila Shukla and Gita Tunisia out of Sunnyvale. And they have developed a concept that pays homage to the city's apricot orchards. The imagery will include colorful trees that are full of apricots, a young girl picking the fruit and the Sunnyvale Heritage Museum in the background. Um, there's gonna be lots of bright sunshine and green grass included. And the final painting again will be more detailed than the attached sketch and it will be very bright and bold. And they intend to paint the largest of the three boxes at their assigned site. Next, please. All right, so Michelle Taniguchi out of Santa Cruz, and she's designed a mural that celebrates local brightly colored wildflowers, including sky lupine, common yarrow, Douglas iris, California poppies, California wild rose, and blue-eyed grass, and California buttercup. The background will be a calm periwinkle blue uh, with lines reminiscent of a circuit board when you get up close. When viewed closely, the lines will also represent a map of Sunnyvale. And she intends to paint both of the boxes that are located at her site. Next, please. Our last proposal is by Alexandra Underwood, who is out of Emeryville. And she has submitted a design that highlights Sunnyvale's diverse ecosystem and by extension, its community. She's chosen to paint the, a stylized graphic representation of plant species native to the area, such as Valley Oak, Crystal Springs, Fountain Thistle, and the Marin Dwarf Flax. She intends to paint both of the boxes that are located at her assigned site. Okay, that's, that's it for the presentation, but I'd like to take just a quick minute to refresh the commission's alternatives for developing a recommendation tonight to the city council. Um, there are three alternatives. The first being recommend to the council for final approval, all 12 designs as they are presented and as they by the selected artists from uh, the selection panel. Alternative number two would be to recommend to the city council final approval up to 12 of the designs. Um, and then if there are any types of modifications you might want to see. And then thirdly, recommend to the city council for final approval less than 12 design proposals. Uh, and at that point, we would work with the artists. If something does not get approved this evening, we would continue to work with the artists to come back to redo the design and come back to through the process for a second look. And that concludes my presentation. So if you have any questions at this time, I'm happy to answer them for you. Who? Yeah, um, I, I put my hand up earlier because it was something that maybe I should have asked at the beginning. Um, and that is, um, 
I was hoping that I could find out where the artist was going to paint. Uh, some of the descriptions um, had specific places, but most of them didn't. Uh, so I was kind of at a loss to visualize what they would look like in context. Uh, do you have that information? Is that something that you know? I don't. Up? I don't. I can. I have the information for each of the locations, and I think. I think if we went back and looked at the proposals, I could tell you which intersections they are at. It's, uh, Kristen, it's, it's in the report. It's before the dis project descriptions. It's, um, it's right at the beginning of the discussion section. Yeah, it has the, but not it, who's assigned to which one. Who's correct? assigned to which location. Oh, it does. Okay, great. Oh, no, no, correct. It does not. It does not say oh, which yeah. one is assigned. To I was going to say, I don't remember seeing it. <laughs> Sorry for that. Okay. That's why I'd have to go off memory, but I could tell you kind of what, I mean, I do have the list of each of the intersections and I could try to remember who had based on, um, if I'm looking at their proposals, I can, I can come oh. up with most of them. Okay. Um, do you want me to tell you the ones that? Yeah. I'm, okay. Um, so number one, was, um, I've got that, uh, Sky, uh, Sky Becker Yamakawa is Matilda and McKinley, I think. I think number, proposal number 10. Um, well, Ricky, why don't you, let's see. Uh, why don't you go back up for a second? Let me, because I'm not, I'm not remembering exactly. You're right. It is one of the, I believe it's one of the Matilda Avenue, but I believe that Sky is actually in our public gallery. Well, in her description, she says, uh, my box at Matilda and McKinley. Oh, well, there so, you go. All yeah. right, there you go. So, yeah, so I got that one. Um, so that's Matil Matilda and McKinley. Uh -huh. And, and then the, under, uh, the, the next one, I think, uh, proposal number two, Matilda and Washington. I believe that is correct. No, actually that is, uh, is that Sunnyvale at McKinley? On the actual uh, slide, it says Matilda and Washington. Actually, Trenton, can you pull up in the J drive the Excel file that has all that information? Trenton's still there. Yeah, uh, sorry, I'm here. Just give me a quick second. It's, um, I'm thinking, you know, we're starting with the downtown and these are all gonna be highly visible. And so I was- All of them are. All of yeah. them are for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. So if it helps you, well, it says Matilda and Washington right up the top there. So I think I got confused because uh, it depends on they were the boxes were assigned alphabetically. Um, they were put in numerical order uh, according to how the city has labeled them and by intersection numbers. And then they were assigned alphabetically from that. So the list that is appearing um, right now that appeared in the RTC is slightly different. I've got it now. Okay. Um, Ricky, can I share? Am I allowed to do that? Or is it only you? You're on yeah, mute. like you should be able to. Uh, let me see if I can stop sharing my screen and then grant you access. Yeah, so then you are able to trend. make sure, sure okay does this work yes there you go that's it okay great okay so matilda at mckinley yeah so these are in the same order oh okay i know why i'm confused um we actually had another artist that was part of the original 12 
uh, but that artist had to drop out of the competition. And so the alternate um, was brought in and took over, which is box number seven, 7017. Matilda in, uh, <clears throat> Matilda in Iowa. And Matilda in, at McKinley. Um, so is there, Sue, oh, oh. I'm just trying to dive a little deeper. Is there a location that you had a concern about or a proposal that you were worrying might not fit for that area? Well, I was wondering where um, number three, um, the train was going to go. That one's going to go on Sunnyvale Avenue and Washington Avenue. Sun Sunnyvale. Line and number six. Sunnyvale and Washington. So, okay, so, uh, okay. Sue, Sunny Washington, Bell at, is, Sunny is, Sue Washington is the street Goodwill is on. Yes, it's yeah, that yeah. corner. I Yeah, I'm just trying to visualize it because, I mean, it's real close to the train uh, tracks there. There are two down next to the train tracks, and those would be the um, Evelyn Avenue at Matilda Avenue off ramp and the other one, which is labeled as on ramp on this one. Uh, <clears throat> Let's see, were those, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, were those the um, stylized <coughs> box, um, rectangles within the box? I don't know how to. Yes. Uh, yes, okay. Okay, so one is for the on-ramp and the um, other for the off-ramp. Yeah, so if you, can you switch back over to the proposals for a second? And I can show you which two those are. So the city labels them as on-ramp and off-ramp, but um, it, it's not as um, straightforward. So this, this one here is one of the ones that are down next to the train tracks. So that is the- Off-ramp. The off-ramp. And then the other one would be Caitlin's. So one more. I think it's uh, actually one forward. Yes, right there. Oh, back. <laughs> there you go. So that's it's right along the uh, parking lot there. Oh, so that's the actual placement. That's the actual place. That's a photograph of the site that she has imposed her okay. design onto. Yeah, that's pretty much what it's gonna look like. Okay. Uh, I had a question about uh, <clears throat> um, the um, number five, um, Evelyn, <clears throat> Evelyn and Francis Avenue. I think that's Winnie. That's Winnie. Mm -hmm. um, I noticed in the, uh, I'm sorry, I'm losing my voice here. The um, the information that you give to artists, you, you discourage text and you wanted to make sure that no handles and windows and vents and all that sort of thing were painted over. So I right. just, just want to ask to clarify that all this art is, is fine in terms of the windows for the eyes and that. No, mouse for the handle and the text and well again those are all details that we still would be working out after the final so yes i haven't talked to winnie about it yes yet but her robots um it does look like uh and i and i think i know what you're getting at it does look like the windows might be painted over in which case we'll have to figure something else out because they are working utility boxes and they need to be able to see through the windows to see the gauges behind there to maintain the, the signals. Um, so again, these are design concepts and I'm gonna need to work with each of the artists as we go through. And all of this will be run through our um, Department of Public Works who maintain the boxes. Um, 
uh, before any of the painting actually starts. I mean, they've, they've already seen all of these as a design concept, but there are questions that have to be answered before the painting would begin. Okay, well, I, you know, the, the robot idea is very cute. Um, I just wanted to make sure that it was doable. Yes, it will be doable because if it's not, then I, I will have to, <laughs> I'll have some explaining to do. <laughs> Okay, I've just got two more questions. I know I, I, one is um, one of the boxes, which is a beautiful design, uh, is going to be at Whole Foods on that corner of Whole Foods. And it's uh, so that is Tafe and McKinley. No, it's McKinley and uh, Iowa. Is it Iowa? Is it Sunnyvale, Saratoga, or no? On the other no, side? so it's. McKinley and the cross street is Murphy actually. So there isn't a box right there. So it's not right at the Whole Foods. I think it's down, Iowa would be down one. No, Iowa doesn't cross McKinley, right? I, Iowa runs, runs parallel to McKinley. Okay, I don't know where I got, I got that. I think from what she said, you know, it's gonna be what she said about Coming so, out I, I and so I included the so I included the uh, proposals verbatim as they were submitted. However, these all the artists have may not be familiar with Sunnyvale. They may have used the wrong street name. So um, I wouldn't get too hung up on that. Those are all kind of uh, details that we'll go over. But I guess I guess. What is exactly is your concern on that one? If we are, if we do have have a box mm -hmm. that is very close to um, a business like Whole Foods, mm -hmm. are they involved at all in um, deciding whether it's uh, something that they they like or not, or is that not appropriate? No, well, not at this point in time. So all of this is on city property. Um, however, there was a letter sent out um, or there was notification sent out through the downtown uh, association that this project is happening and where exactly all the locations were. So um, all of the businesses downtown should be aware of the project. And as far as uh, I've heard so far, everybody's been very supportive of it uh, and they're excited to see this happening. Um, but I haven't spoken to anybody in particular at Whole Foods if that's your question. Yeah, um, and uh, my final question is, <clears throat> so uh, notice of um, proposals, is that gone out for everyone, for all the, uh, all the boxes, or is it just for the first 12? Uh, just for the first 12. The request, you're talking about the request for qualifications that went out for the artists. It was Correct. just for 12 boxes. So out of the pool uh, that submitted uh, 12, there were 25 people that submitted uh, applications and 12 uh, were selected to move forward with an alternate. Okay, so so the whole process will be repeated from, from the beginning. It'll be repeated, next yes. 12 and then for the next 12. And will any yes. high, high, school box, uh, high schools be included in the next round, do you know? Well, we don't know yet. We're still planning that. Um, we suspect that just from a staff, um, a workload standpoint, they will be separate phases. They won't be simultaneous, but um, we're, we're not 100% sure yet. Um, yeah, the, the high schools, however, will not go through the same process. They will, uh, we, haven't we haven't determined exactly what the process will be like, um, but that's more of an invitation for those nine boxes, the remaining, whatever the math is, 13, 14 boxes, um, I think are, uh, will be going through the same process. And I have talked to several artists who unfortunately didn't see the request for qualifications until after the deadline. So they well, will they be applying in the second round and those artists that, um, those artists that uh, didn't make the 12 in this round are welcome to apply again also. Awesome. That's all my questions. Thank you. You're welcome. 
Uh, Agnes? So I have a question about phase two. You said that three boxes would be saved for high school students, possibly. Are we planning on inviting um, middle school um, as well as elementary schools to submit proposals? We have not gotten that far. Our initial thought is uh, the high schools because they have all expressed interest in doing this type of a project. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I can't say definitely whether middle schools or elementary will be included in this project. Um, we still have to work all that out. Okay. And the other question I have is I'm a little confused about our voting. It sounds like we have three options, uh -huh. either all 12, up to 12 with modifications, and less than 12. Uh -huh. So do we decide on how we're going to vote on those three categories, which of those three categories we're going to use to vote, or I'm confused. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. And uh, Damien, you might have to help me out with this, uh, but I think you will be, uh, we'll be developing a recommendation that will go to city council. Um, and the three recommendations that you have are putting all 12 through as proposed putting some of them through and some of them through with modifications uh, and then putting however many you decide to go through. But if there's one you really feel isn't appropriate for the project, then you could pull that out of the last, you know, the, the third alternative is to approve up to 12 or less than 12. Um, so you could approve 10 and say two of them we don't feel are appropriate for the project. Is that Damon? Am I interested yeah, in that? Yeah, correctly? if they if they agree with the the recommendation, it's a, it's sort of a, a red a red from script. If you want to go off of or di divert from any of the three recommendations, staff could help you um, craft, um, and you guys can discuss what it is you're trying to achieve um, a recommendation to be um, moved forward for council. And then you'll need to get, you'll, you'll need to say like to make it with an amendment uh, with a friendly amendment, then the, that amendment will need to be accepted <clears throat> or seconded and then uh, so on and so forth. So if you, if there's anything that changes, it needs to be um, on the record and agreed by all of the members and then move forward as such. There'll be a lot of help from Ricky reading back and we'll have to try to record. Track. Yeah, and record, try to record exactly what it is you're trying to achieve with anything that's off script. Um, and we'll help navigate that as much as we can. Okay, yeah. thanks. Just to piggyback really quick. So when questions and comments and everything's been done and Donna had asked, is there a motion from my commissioners? That's where you could raise your hand and say, I'd like to make a motion and you could choose one of those three options. I'd like to make a, mo a motion for blah, 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 blah. And then that motion, and then somebody would have to second it, and then it would go for a vote. Okay, I'm not so confused anymore. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll <Yeah>. see. <laughs> yeah. Just a technical note, as you guys know, R Ricky has a technical issue. So, Kristen, I don't know if you know it or not, but you're technical. I just noticed, best. yes. Could I allow <laughs> Ricky to talk? <laughs> Yes, you can, and which is important. So he is listening in, but he's not controlling it. It's just a little sidebar. Okay. Oh. There he is. Back? So I'm on my phone right now. Yes. Okay. But I've allowed him to talk. Uh, Donna, question for you? Yeah, so for instance, I, I like all the artist work. Um, the first artist, um, where she had sort of like the pencil sketch, I would almost like to see more of that developed in color. And um, I, cause the other artists tend to kind of finish theirs off a little bit more. And it was very, I could see that there was a lot of detail with um, the bees and the butterflies. Uh, but I almost would like to see, you know, one extra presentation with color. I'm not sure if she's doing it on a computer and can kind of give us a sense of the color for that. And then so, so she will be 
uh, before painting begins. Uh, unfortunately, that wasn't able to happen in time for this meeting. There was a very short, because of the holidays and I was out sick, um, there was a short time uh, turnaround uh, for getting these designs in. And several of the artists, based on other obligations, it, it just wasn't enough time to do what they really wanted to do with their actual submissions. And so I want to give them credit for um you know, getting the designs in as they did. Uh, and, and the artist uh, Sky and I have um, emailed back and forth and I know she's interested in doing the color drawing. It just wasn't able to happen in time. And, and remember too, that when we're putting these staff reports together, there's a very, there's a four week lead time, four to six week lead time. So we had to run with what was submitted and it was in black and white, but um, there will definitely be uh, uh, colored drawings before painting actually starts. Is that something that we as the art commission can be emailed about as that, as the project goes on? You know, I know before the next, I mean, I'm not, I know March 1st, you guys are the council's voting, but, um, you know, before they start painting, you know, like you give us updates on sometimes on how projects are, are going, if, if there can be an update as to, the progress of the artwork, you know, either during, between now and the next art commission meeting or prior to the next art commission meeting, just so we can have a follow through on that. And then also the second art piece, the train, it would be nice to see how that would look on, on you know, like if that's gonna be on one box or two boxes and how that would look on each box or if it's gonna be on one box and wrap around, I would almost like to see how that would look as a sort of a uh, layout, so. So I, I can provide you with updates at any time. However, there would not, you can only vote uh, or, you know, th there would be nothing official other than here's an update, here's what we're, we're looking at doing at this point. Okay. Because you'd have to have a quorum and be within the, the meeting um, setting to, to make any kind of vote. Okay, well, I'm just, you know, I, I like all the work. I'm just like, you know, discussing all those little details. And those are like, if we said, okay, let's vote for all of them. But in the, I would like to see updates as to how the art's progressing. I'm not, for me personally, okay. like yeah. having, I'm not like saying like, oh, I don't like this artwork at all. I'm just like, I would like to see more how it kind of works on the, on the boxes as a layout. Right. So your recommendation tonight will be based on um, the design concept that's been submitted, the overall concept and the direction that it's going. Uh, did that answer all your questions? Okay. Uh, Sue? Yeah, I, this is something that I brought, brought up before. It's, it's kind of along the lines of uh, what Donna was asking about in terms of a amendment or a friendly amendment to uh, an approval or a, a, <clears throat> a follow-up and that is uh, uh, for example um, the artwork that's proposed by Art Circle uh, Studios it's uh, to be across from the 23andMe building right. which has a, a, a really cool uh, glass facade that you know is, is plants and it has a certain theme to it, has a certain feel to it. And when I saw her drawing, her proposal, I thought, what? You know, I don't, I don't get this. I don't think I like it very much. But when I looked at it in, in context and, and saw that you're in these apartment buildings and you're looking at that and across the street, you're seeing the 23 and Me, it just, wow, it was really dramatic for me. It's like, it made all the difference. The colors were just right. It made the, the background of the 23andMe building stand out. Um, it, was, it was just very, extremely well planned. And the way she does a window between the two boxes, um, I didn't get it, but I get it in, in context and it's really cool. Uh, so for me, it made a, a, a turnaround difference in whether I would even approve it or not. 
so I'm thinking if it was that, that dramatic for me and one piece that it might be important for uh, council members to be able to see where these are gonna be to approve them. We get we can certainly work on that for the for the next uh, presentation. We can include location. Yeah. If you think that would be helpful. I, I do. I do. Okay. Because I think the art the art should pay some homage to where it is. I mean, everybody is, you know, um, in the Sunnyvale theme, most people have uh, picked flowers and, and things like that and butterflies, but um, which is pretty gen generic in the sense of everybody's probably gonna like those. But on the other hand, um, the, the color choices and the, and the placements and things, I, as an art, art person, you know, and maybe some of the council mem members too, they will wanna see what the context is, so. Yeah, so one of the one of the things when we were talking about how to present and develop proposals was um, a, a recommendation to consider what's going on in the site. So I do think that was something all of the artists took into consideration as they were making. But again, uh, their vision might be different than what our vision of, of you know what's going on at the site may may look like. I don't so. Well, sure. <laughs> Yeah, no, just just so it's a part of the consideration that the, Yeah, it was it, well it was recommended to be a part of the consideration. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and the other thing I don't I don't know if it it might go without saying, but I'll just say it. Uh some of the artists um submitted ones that were clearly um meant to be on multiple boxes and within this 12 locations, some of them they range from one to three boxes. So some of them will naturally go into certain locations based on their approach to the art design. Um, so it that will eliminate some right off the bat in terms of flexibility in terms of location, um, and then and then we can go from there. But yeah. Okay. Good to know. Uh, Agnes, are you got another question? Yes, I do. Thank you. Okay, good. <laughs> so, um, Donna, when I was looking at Sky's work um, earlier today, I shared your same concern that it was just simply in black and white. But then there was there were also um, photos that showed her work in color from previous installations that she had done, and her colors are extremely vivid and, in my opinion, really, really beautiful. So. I don't know if it would help if, if you haven't had a chance to see that, if it would be easy to show that tonight since, since her artwork came across in black and white. It was from, I guess, the agenda. I looked online at it. Uh, I mean, it would certainly be identical to what she's planning on doing in this work that we're looking at, but the colors are just absolutely stunning. So uh, Trent, can you work on pulling that up while I, address that a little bit but um well, so with, there you know what artist site uh well no it'll be in the you can um the j drive or, or actually oh you don't have you can't get to legistar right now can you oh, I, i've got the agenda open i just need to know where I'm. yeah going, go go into that pages so it would be the first artist we're talking about okay. the yeah it's artist. the first artist luckily yeah. like on page um, so, three or four and, and within each of your packets, there were um, on one of the attachments that were there were examples of past work. So mm -hmm. um, you should, if you go to, it's going to be page. I'm going to say page starting on page six of attachment number two or three. One of the the, the biggest of the attachments. Yeah, the attachment three. And then, so, and I include, I purposely included past work so that you could get a really good idea of, of style, including colors and including, you know, brush stroke and um, backgrounds and kind of all of that put together. So um, I would interpret this as the black and white drawing with similar color schemes. Um, and the, and 
the artist does actually talk about, you know, that the, there will be brighter colors involved and the bee will be yellow and black surrounded by colored flowers. Um, I'm, I'm going off the top of my head right now because I don't have. Yeah, and there was butterflies in her. Yeah. And then there's butterflies so bright, in this lower bright, one here. Yeah. Yeah. So she says bright flowers and pinks, red, purples, and oranges, and a bright uh, blue sky, black background. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I anticipate that all of these boxes will be very colorful and bold, and you will be able to see them from afar across the street. You'll be able to see that something's there, but to really take in a, a utility box, you really need to, it's, it's more intimate. You need to be kind of closer up than you would say standing across the street from 23andMe and the glass uh, wall, which obviously is a totally different scale. So the two can't even really compete. Um, one's gonna have bold, bold coloring. The other one, the colors are not quite as bold, but it's so massive, you can't miss it. So I think together, they're not necessarily competing. They're complimenting each other on that particular corner. <laughs> if that makes sense. Thanks for bringing this up, Trenton. Okay, any further questions before we uh, move on to the next, which Donna will take over from here. All right, thank you. Okay, um, let me see. Um, since we remain in a virtual study, I will ask the public to use the raise hand feature or star night on a telephone to indicate they wish to speak. City staff will ask you to unmute your microphone when it is your turn to address the commission or board. City staff, do we have any members of the public wishing to speak on this item? Kristen, can you do me a favor and can you check uh, the members and see if any members of the public want to uh, raise their hand to speak? Not at this time. You're muted, Kristen, but I can see it and there's none at this time. Thank you, Trenton. Okay, um, I will not ask for a discussion or a motion from my colleagues. I move alternative number one to approve the artwork for all locations. Donna, would you like to ask for a second? Okay, do we have a second? I second. Okay. City staff, please conduct a random order voice, voice vote. No problem. As uh, Commissioner Lamb will remain absent. Um, Commissioner Cerrone? Yes. Chair Eskridge? Yes. And Vice Chair Vice? Yes. So the motion passes uh, three uh, with one absent and uh, one uh, abstaining. Okay, awesome. Okay, um, standing item, consideration of potential study issues. Next on the agenda is item 220270, Art Commission proposed study issues, calendar year 2023. Currently, we don't have any uh, upcoming study issues, uh, but this is a friendly reminder to all commissioners um, is that you are uh, available to uh, submit a study issues anytime. Uh, we do recommend that we do this uh, prior to October deadline, uh, thus giving staff uh, ample time to review and provide feedback uh, to commissioners. Thank you. Okay. And do we have any non-agenda items and comments? Um. Ah. <laughs> Commissioner Vice. Thanks, Ricky. I have a few questions about some of the art that we have already approved and where it stands in terms of installation. 
Um, we had approved um, a light type fixture near target. Um, that was kind of like in the middle of the street. Uh huh. Yes. Do, do we in know where that? Yeah, from the people. I think they were either from Seattle, the artists were Seattle or Portland. Do uh, that was Future Cities Lab, and they're actually San Francisco. Oh, I believe. My bad. I believe that's okay. Um, they uh, uh, the you're thinking of one of the artists from the amphitheater project was from Seattle. Oh, that yeah, you're right. Last yeah. time. Um, so they are uh, still in fabrication. I okay. don't have an installation date yet, but they tell me it's coming soon. <laughs> okay, how about Othello's? Where is he with um, his? It's the same thing. They are they are still working out. So part of what they're part of what City Line is dealing with is that they are still under construction. So they're having to, um, although they were ready to install on a certain date, they might not be able to. Uh, because of what's going on with the construction. And um, as I understand it, the corner where the Othello, uh, sculpt Othello sculpture, uh, Woody's sculpture was going to go, that particular corner is under construction right now. It's directly across from uh, Redwood, the Redwood Grove. Mm, okay. um, so there was talk about, in Trenton, do you recall, but they, there was talk about relocating that temporarily or installing it temporarily um, down farther towards Matilda. So I would have to, I'll make a note and I can check in on that. Uh, okay. And then I have a it's, question. It's still coming. It's still on its way. Okay. And then I have a question about two others. Okay. What, did, what did council decide to do um, with the civic center proposal that we had, had submitted? Uh, there was a, quite a bit of discussion around it, which was a great discussion. Uh, if you missed it, but um, ultimately they supported the uh, commission's recommendation to uh, uh, award the commission to Linda Brunker. Okay, and then the last question I have is the sculpture that Google proposed and the issues surrounding light in, lighting. Where are we with that? We are still working with them on that. Um, and we will be at the next meeting, including informationally more information about um, what was decided. Unless Damon, do you want to add anything or Trenton? Um, but we will be putting, putting together a more formal or semi-formal uh, information, informational memo uh, to the commission to update you on that project. Okay. Yeah, we'll at, send but... both an email uh -huh. and present and um, <clears throat> provide staff update and comments um, at, during the March meeting. And um, we anticipate that it will the um, the appeal will be resolved between now and then. Excellent. Thank you. I, oh yeah, I noticed I live um, in District Five <laughs> of Sunnyvale, and we have the Fair Oaks Park project. I drive by there every so, and that's going on really smoothly. There's um, about five or six sculptures that are supposed to be um, going on there, and so I see how that's been progressing. So it's good to see see that as um, is working out really well. Yeah, that that project is underway and in fabrication. We do expect installation uh, in late May uh, for James Moore's uh, for his five sculptures. So um, I, I uh, actually we're getting close to the end of it. Also, uh, I talk to him uh, two or three times a week, <laughs> working out details right now. So we're really looking forward to that, and it's 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 coming along really really quickly. Cool. We're also starting our discussions in regards to uh, the possibility of a, um, a grand opening and how that's what that's going to look like. Commissioner mm -hmm. Cerrone, oh, uh, let's start about that, Donna. Uh, you want to continue? Oh, I just had one question. I noticed that I think I got an email. I don't know. Oh, yeah. I think it was either the library or something. We're having like a great Valentine's hunt or something um, that was uh, somehow 
provided by the Arts Commission. I'm like, I don't remember hearing anything about that. So I just wondered if it's like, it's something that was part of the library division and it's something that, okay, we're just gonna, cause I never heard about it. So I said, I know I heard about the candy canes cause we judged that and stuff, but I didn't, I, and I didn't see any of the Valentine's hearts or anything, but um, I just noticed that it was being sponsored by the art commission. Um, cause I knew like the gingerbread house, we knew about that, but I never heard about that. So it's just, unless and we I see that Winnie's it, hand totally was raised. <laughs> I see that Winnie's hand was raised immediately after that question. Did you have uh, a response for that? Yeah, so Chair Eskridge, really good question. And um, so I'm one of the organizers behind the scavenger hunt with the heart. And it is not an Arts Commission activity whatsoever. So you're absolutely right about that. Um, There's a couple of press articles that got published about it. And somehow they got it mixed up and they thought that it was associated with the Arts Commission, but it really wasn't. It's a neighborhood um, project. Um, we got a grant from the City of Sunnyvale's neighborhood uh, grant program. And so that's how we made it happen. So sorry about the confusion. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner Cerrone? Uh, yeah, um, speaking of gingerbread houses and such, um, I just wondered, did you guys sit down and like decide, oh, the gingerbread houses, that was a great program and it, it all turned out well. And the candy cane hunt, wow, that was fantastic. And we're gonna do it again. So. I'm just, since it was the first time to try those things, um, have you thought about whether they were successful or whether you want to recreate them or scrap them or have you had any thoughts since? Yeah, I know, I know everybody involved was interested in continuing them to be year over year, but we, ha we haven't had any formal debut for about, just to be honest, it was, one project's over on to the next. Um, so as, as we kind of get past the spring and summer, then we'll, we'll uh, query with interested parties to see what kind of interest there is to do a repeat and to potentially do them again. So you didn't have a sense whether, whether it was worth it or not, basically. Oh, I mean, it was, it was very well received. Yeah. And it okay. was, people okay. really enjoyed it and loved it. And every time, you know, here at the community center, we're here every day and, Saw plenty of people interacting with the candy canes that were here. I know the library said that the gingerbread houses were really popular. So it was definitely a great community okay. thing to do. And there was a lot of awareness about it. So it's just, yeah, when we get to the time, that time, I'm, um, we'll see who's ready to, to do round two. Okay. And one, one thing I would add too, is that, um, you know, these are still build up um, and entry level type uh, programs. And I know that they were, somewhat born out of some larger ideas and uh, some some future hopes but I think if we keep <clears throat> if we keep doing these and keep bringing awareness and fun to the community even in small small measure uh, when downtown's done and um, all these other things uh, come online and we get some practice we, our staffing levels are up I think we can continue to look at growing those um, in the future, um, but it'll take some some time. I'd call it like a slow a slow grow, um, but they were very well received. Okay, well th that's that's great news because you know if we can you know have something to build on for the future, that's that's hopeful. Appreciate that. And, and if I can just piggyback onto that, also one of the things that we added at a staff level that I'm not even sure the commission is aware of, but we did a scavenger hunt um, that people on campus could pick up. And then when they completed it, if they took it to our front registration counter, they got a Sunnyvale hacky sack or some splat kind ball of thing. splat ball or some kind of swag we had. And, and we thought, well, you know, we'll get a dozen kids or so. But I think we got uh, over 25 kids that actually... Uh, did the hunt, oh, well over the that. Clues, went and found which candy cane had what on it and turned it back into us. So well, geez. we were super wow. excited. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so if that's a measurement, we did great. It was yeah. well received <laughs> and the kids actually really enjoyed um, 
that kind of circling around these things and, and picking things out and pointing to things. So it was, it was fun to watch. Good, good. good. Do we have any commit uh, any staff comments before? One quick one, um, just an FYI. Over the next week or so, you'll see the. Um, sorry, let me take a half step back. Going back to the um, previously approved project where council um, had approved one hundred thousand dollars for um, a sculpture modified by artists that was unique to Sunnyvale back to that project. And the next phase was to do a, a community survey and brainstorm and pull the community about what things they were interested in. That's gonna be launching over the next week or so. So, and that, it'll have a pretty decent window because we really wanna make sure that the outreach is um, as broad as it can be to engage as much of the public as possible. So it's not gonna be just up for a week or something. So there'll be plenty of opportunity um, for you guys to help spread the word, but I just wanna let you know that'll be launching very shortly. Thank you. And then I think that concludes uh, staff comments, Chair Eskridge. Oh, then currently you're on mute. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Okay, uh, Jeremy, this meeting is adjourned at 8.33 p.m. And I want to thank everyone for your participation in tonight's meeting. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Hey, Kristen, can you please do Thank me a you. favor? At Hi. the top left of this, uh, can you please stop the recording? Click on the okay. And then can you click it again and click it one more time?